Hi, everybody. Craig Shacklett with UR Comp from Trio 360 and Casino Marketing University, interviewing the one and only, the host whisperer, Nick Ippolito. Nick, how are you, sir? Good, sir. And uh, <laughs> titled by you. <laughs> you, you, hey. you gave me that title. I love hey. that title. It's going to be my book for sure. You earned it. You earned it. I mean, I, I, every time I see you, you're some at some different property, just dropping knowledge bombs. And, almost uh, weekly. Almost weekly. Elevating the industry. And I want to ask you, because yeah. you've, you've seen a lot of different properties. You've probably seen a lot of different team structures with host teams, player development teams. Like walk me through the different types of structures you've seen. Yeah, everybody's unique. And also I strive to do customize, right? So if a, um, uh, a, a, a casino approaches me uh, beyond my coming in for a couple of days and doing my sales training, right? If they approach me and say, we want you to look at uh, the, ho the PD team as a whole, I say audit the PD team, but not numbers, not audit like a CFO, right? Obviously, I have no financial background, but audit as far as what is your job descriptions? What are your titles? How do you have the comp matrix set up? How do you have the bonus program set up? How do you have the coding set up, right? And then those places I'm there maybe 90 days, right? So then over the years, what we have is a sales environment. Um, and, you, and what that means is I'm an individual. I work on a team. I could have three, four other hosts. I could have 15 other hosts, right? John Fernandez at Morongo has a ton of hosts. And he runs that like a sales department. So a sales department would be, I'm an individual guy. I'm an individual salesperson. I'm responsible for my productivity and my numbers. And they get posted on the wall. And everybody can see my, product, my production every month. So that's one way to run a, a host team. Great way to run a host team. Great way to run a host team. They are sales. And you post their numbers and everybody could see it. And there's competition and there's fire and there, you know, it's it's called what? Good competition, right? Good competition. You don't want bad, you don't want evil competition. But competition is, you know, that is going to breed ego no matter what you do, right? But so there's that sales approach and that individual and my numbers, my players, my numbers, my players. And then we run into what are we paying the hosts? And we run into answering your call off duty, answering your call off shift, you know, following up with your player. That's your client. And another host saying, hey, your guy's here. Your guy's here. You better come in on your day off. Your guy just walked in the door. We know that. That exists, right? A lot of, a lot of hosts right now are going, yeah, yeah, yeah. No kidding, Nick. Shut up, right? We know that. So the other, I think the only other aspect is to still have a sales technique, still have your sales what I teach in sales, it will never go away. Life is sales and service. But the other approach is a team approach. And I'm wondering if you know or anybody watching can comment, email me, DM me, or DM you and let me know. I'd like to hear the different you know, uh, setups, different structures. In my experience, and probably yours as well, 95% have that sales, individual coding, individual bonus, individual production, I don't know how many people post it and really run it like a sales, right? And then the other side of it would be a team. You still do sales techniques to get the people in. You still assume the sales, all the things I teach. But now it's a team effort. So there's not my player, my production, my player, my production, my player. It, it's camaraderie. It, we're looking out for each other. And when I leave off my shift, I give you my phone. And I call and Craig calls me and goes, hey, it was Daryl around. And I go, no, nah, he's off. Craig, what can I do for you? Because when you eliminate that coding, that individual coding and that individual production and that individual bonus or incentive, then you create that team uh, mm -hmm. team environment. And there's a way to do that. There's an absolute way to handle that. And, and it's not going to be for every you know body. So I think that different markets, different hosting, different you, you're going to have to get a more aggressive or more, you know. But I think there's a way to make this team thing work. When I leave, a when I leave, I don't want to be a host anymore. I quit and I go off and do something else. Now my players aren't scrambling around. Well, who's my, who's my host? <laughs> and, and, you know, so there is there is a benefit in there. There is there is saving that percentage of business that you lose when you lose that host. There's also that percentage you you're going to gain. Uh, there are some hosts out there that sleep, you know, they put their phone right here, right? When yep. they, 
You and I know them. But they still miss calls. They have to. They go on vacation. They go to the bathroom. They go to the movie theater. So we we have to figure out the percentage that we're we're losing over that. So I, I remember a quote that stuck with me. I think it was from Jack Welch, who used to be a, a famous CEO of GE. And it was like, show me a person's comp structure and I'll, I'll tell you their behavior. And I think it all comes down to if you want that hybrid, you have to be very deliberate about how you compensate the team. Because if they're going to make money just on their coded players, like why would they spend it another minute helping somebody else's players, right? If they're only going to make extra coin with right. theirs, they're going to be laser focused especially if they've been trained by you on like hitting the phones, getting, getting trips driven. Um, it's if, if it's like, Hey, you know, I, I see a problem sometimes with the team approach of like, there's no metrics. It's kind of like, Hey guys, just hang out and like, you know, like service the players and they come in. And if there's no, you know, there's no individual accountability, there's no like something to drive for to increase revenue there. They may be the friendliest host team in the world, but they are not driving any incremental trips. So, I think it's all about, in, in my opinion, because with UR Comp, I'm sporting a bunch of UR Comp gear because I'm way overdue for a ha uh, haircut. Um, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. The, uh, we started out with the team approach where it was just like we didn't really have coding. It was just kind of like we get people on the website and we try to book them on these trips. But then it was like, the, you know, we, nobody was taking the initiative to go out and reach that big player and, and drive it. So then we, over time, we kept tweaking it. So we have, a response time goal for the team where it's like, hey, if somebody's out, like you are gonna be penalized if somebody doesn't step in and respond to this player. So like everything comes in and there's a response time goal, there's a team um, trips driven goal, but most of a, of a host's incentive commission is gonna be driven by what they do. Um, so yeah, it's, a, it's tough to walk the line. I'm not saying we have it perfect, but I think we've got it where they are, they do have benefits, for helping their their teammates if they're out to like respond and make sure the players are serviced. But for the most part, the ones that are going to make the most money are the ones that are are doing the Nick Ippolito style of just hitting the phones and driving trips. Right. Yeah, and you know, um, I've heard of a structure, Nick. I'd like to get your opinion on where it's like there's almost two different teams. One is the hunters that are like try calling, getting people in, and then there's a team that's the huggers that are. You know, people come in and they're not, they don't have a number they're trying to hit for driving trips. They're just like, hey, yeah, oh, Nick booked you. Well, that's great. Yeah, Nick's not here, but hey, I love you. Come here. Like, what are, what are your thoughts on that type Absolutely. of Absolutely. And I've set that up. I think I set it up with Penn Gaming at, at two properties years ago, uh, Hollywood, I think, in Ohio. And, you know, you have telemarketers, right? And I'm known for that, right? In Vegas, where I had the biggest telemarketing room at the Paris Casino. It, it shook the world. It shook the industry. And they were making 10 bucks an hour and they were outdoing the, you know, host that had worked at Bally's in Paris, uh, not Paris, but host that worked at Bally's for 10, 15 years. They were out per performing them. Why? <clears throat> Nothing against the host, but a telemarketer could make 150 calls a day, right? Bam, 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 bam. And you're going to get a higher conversion rate. So, yes, some properties, I think you could have telemarketing and then who's going to greet me on the floor and to your point is phenomenal because you know even i look at incremental revenue that's all i like and, and this is what was coming so forward in my head so many things to say about what you said you know there's there's i i teach this all the time and you know what's beautiful about this conversation we're having craig and the last one we just had and and we should really make a point of this i'm really shaking it up here because we've sat in this pd bubble for too long and we've never questioned it. Oh, this is how many hosts, this is how many players are coded to a host. This is how you do an incentive program. This is, they should be huggers and they should be hunters and they should be, oh, enough, let's, you know, it's, it's 2023, it's going on 2024. Let's, let's pop the bubble. Let's go, well, is any of this working, right? So I think the first thing is what business does the property own? And there's a huge percentage that the property owns. Whether there's you are a comp are on the property or you get rid of all the hosts tomorrow, they're coming, right? Mm -hmm. Those people are coming. So I think you have marketing has to identify and host too. And PD leaders with their with their with uh, every time I train PD leaders now, I'm going after the database and PD leaders are not wrapping their head around this. You have to really know what percentage of this revenue do we own? I just was at Tachi Palace and I pulled how many people come 22 times plus a month. 
right? Just be curious. How many come 11 times a month? How many come 19 times a month? And you got to get these numbers. And we're hosts, right? We don't live in that. And just so I'm clear, so the listeners are clear. So when you say like you own it, you're saying if if the doors are open, these players are coming in, whether you have a host team or not, like these, you're not having to do anything because they're coming no matter what. So the DM's driving them. Their location is close by. It's driving them. You know, why are they going to drive another 25 minutes, another 30, 40, 50 minutes, right? So we got to identify what the hosts are in driving. And we're coding them to host. We're coding those to host. We're bonusing hosts. We're incentivizing hosts for that. Can you even grow? If I come 22 times a month, can I grow it? Is there, you said your word, incremental trip. Is there an incremental trip where somebody comes 22 plus times a month? I don't think so. There's going to be a, a half a percent maybe, but I don't think so, right? Now, are there two casinos within a 20-mile radius? Yeah. Then I only come 11 times a month. So the other 11, I'm going to the – so the, we really – we re, that's how we have to look at this under the microscope. And I know, you know, and you know this, marketing does that with direct mail. They they target areas. They zone areas. You know, there's PD leaders out there that zone um, – um, Steve at, at, at Prayer Band in Kansas, you know, he has battle zones. So that's where PD leaders have to step up. So the first step is, uh, you know, where can we get the incremental uh, growth and, and, and bonus on growth and, and pay on growth? And that's, I would live in the incremental and the growth, first of all, and I would separate what we own. And then you said an interesting thing too. So if I'm coded to 480 and above, that's the other thing they do. Um, we're going to code the host to four. So if I'm a 350, Craig, I meander around the casino going, yeah. this sucks, right? Nobody talks to me. And to your point, the host might go, oh, I, I can't. They're not coded. They're not hosted. You're So it's only hurt in the casino. Yep. The next step is, and I think we talked about this in the last one, how many are coded to a host? And And I understand, you know, I want 125 coded to a host. So you're going to need a lot more hosts. And CFOs are going to go, well, I ain't hiring any more hosts, right? It's too much payroll. But you're only hurting the business, right? But once you start defining your segments, your PD segments, not your marketing, and I don't think marketing segments and PD segments should be the same. I don't think that's a, that's, that's a combined world. So PD has to have their own segments, and they have to understand the people that we're going after. And who, you know, give your host 10, 10 names a day and go, here, call these 10 people. They only make 11 trips, and they live 20 minutes away. By the end of the day, you should be like, hey, what happened with those 10 people? Mm -hmm. the end of the day, I can make 10 calls right now while I'm talking to you, right? So um, we really have to define those segments before we can we can really say, who are we paying? What are we paying? What bonus are we giving? You know, um, uh, it's very important. Yeah, I think because right now it's difficult to measure hosts and incentivize them because most people are like, okay, you need to generate a quarter million dollars in Theo this quarter. Or whatever but to your point how many of those people are you own the business and it's just kind of luck like if one of the hosts they they can, you've seen it they can go on maternity leave they're gone right. for a quarter and they finish number one because they got a great book of business that's coming no matter what so absolutely yeah. absolutely so that's something i mean we focus on a lot with trio and i know that you focus on with with pd leaders is like identifying the actual like where can you move the needle it's not Oh, you know, one of my players had a rich uncle that died. Now they're gambling a lot more. Like, good for me. No, like, you have nothing to do with that. Right. Yeah. Right. It's driving the bit. And, and, the, and then the other thing I would do in setting up a structure is, you know, if you have executive hosts, th then they're responsible for driving and you have to clock their incremental growth. You have to clock that they actually grew this either by trips or by play or by Theo. But then you would have, I don't like the word junior host, but you have VIP services on the floor. And they don't, they're not individuals, but they take care of you. Once you identify the 3,800 people that come 22 times a month, right? Then you give, then you say, okay. And then if the players say, and you know what's going to happen, the people who come 22 times a month, they only have a, a 98 ADT, right? But they come every day and they're black card. So black card says you get a host. That's what it mm -hmm. says on the right. So now they say, well, how come he's not my host anymore? And you go, no, you have seven hosts. We're VIP hosts. You have seven hosts. This way, when I'm off or I quit or I get a broken leg, John takes care. Like you got to sell it like you got to upsell it. Yeah. 
like when you raise the price in the salmon in the in the in the coffee shop, I was just doing a customer service training, and the waiters were like, you know, they raised the price of salmon. I go, okay, so tell the people that last crap that we had, I wouldn't feed it to my cat. <laughs> right? You got to upsell it, and they'd be all really. Oh my god, my in fact, I gave it to my cat, and it got sick. So I told my boss, and we got better salmon for you. What? A sell it, baby. <laughs> right so um you got to upsell to the players so there's that there's that element that there's a whole bunch of there's a lot going on right now in pd I, i'm the only one stirring it up and pop, popping the bubbles but we really need uh, it's funny i said there's a lot going on in pd there's not uh, there's there's hosts out there coded to 700 people and you're right of those 700 they're making their money off the top 50 who come every day they're calling maybe another 50 and that's I don't do math well, but that's another 350 people that aren't getting called or touched or or anything because the host can't. You can't. I can't be coded to 700 people. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, I'll make my numbers. You know. And so many times I'll go to a property and they'll say to me, "Oh, that's our best host." Uh, you know, she or he, he or she, she makes her numbers every. I go, let me see, and I pull them up individually. I pull the numbers on Excel. I go now. I tell the database guy, pull out everybody who's 20 makes 22 trips a month. Now's how how our numbers look. Oh, not that great. Yeah, but and you brought up another thing, PD. How much do we pay the host? How much do we bonus the host? Where do we start with the bonus? Where do we start the incentive? Yeah, it's all. So I'm paying you thirty five thousand a year, forty five thousand dollars a year, sixty five thousand dollars a year to be a host. What do I get out of that? Before I bonus you, right? Before I start giving you bonus, what do I get out of that? And maybe it's the people who come all the time. You know, you got to We got to start segmenting and 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 breaking it up. Mm -hmm. Well, we we incentivize hosts only on trips that they booked ahead of time. So the system will like reconcile and it'll say, okay, we got play data in and here, let's say there's 20 trips that came in, only eight of them were booked ahead of time by the host. And so they get credit for the eight trips that are there. Um, nice. It's not perfect because you know Nothing. there's always ways to get around it, but it's better than saying like, why would I pay you on these 12 trips that you didn't even know were happening? Yeah. And and why? And why, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the PD leader's job to go. All right. I'll pay you. I get it. You know, that's for the host to say to the PD leader. No, I didn't drive those trips. When he got here, we had coffee and I qualified him and I said, where else you go? OK, then the PD leader can go. Oh, I'll pay you for those other three. It's OK. It mm -hmm. doesn't have. Don't defend yourself. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's the it's the conversation and, and the relationship between the PD leader and, and the host. Right. So. But I think it all boils down to, and this is a perfect spot to wrap up, but it all boils down to accountability, right? Like that's that's what we keep talking about is like diving into the numbers. What yes. are we measuring? What are we rewarding? What are we punishing? And, and but if you're not diving into the numbers, you, you can't do anything. And we need to stop with the the host has to sit there and click 60 touches and 60 voicemails and 30. Doesn't matter, Craig. If you make 500 phone calls and you do all your touches and all your clicks and all your thing and all your logging and you book one person and I do three, I make three calls only and I don't do any of my click and I, and I book five people. Uh, you want me every day, right? Yeah. Over you, right? So we got to get away from that. The last thing, if we're wrapping up, the last thing I want to put out there, because I'm very curious. So I hope, I really hope that this gets DM'd and you get DM'd in comments. I, I'm a host on a property. And I've worked on that property for six years. Okay. I quit and I go into insurance. Okay. And I send a letter or a text to my players. I'm no longer your host. Right. What percentage of business do we lose? as a property nobody's clocking it mm -hmm. we can only guess uh it could be five percent it could be zero percent it could be twenty percent but i'm curious if we're if we're clocking and if we're not we need to start clocking it because that's a really huge question now i'm the same host i quit i go to another casino now what's the percentage got to be higher mm -hmm. Unless those people already go to that casino, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm real. So every time somebody says to me, "Oh, if I quit or if I went to another casino, this place would lose twenty percent of the, my book," I, and right away I go, "I don't. I have no idea. I'm not going to say yes or no. 
I think that's very high. I think 20% is high. And often there's this. He goes to a new casino. She goes to a new casino. The first three months we might lose the, like, the people go check it out and then they're back because they built their points and they built it. So I, maybe it's a stupid question, uh, but I think it's a really interesting to try to find that percentage. And also if you do individual is the percentage higher. If you do a team thing is the, is the, cause that's what, like when you talk about coding hosts and paying hosts and what's the goal, the goal is not to give the host more money. That's not the goal. The goal is to protect that database, right? To protect your loyalty with the player. Yeah. Well, and you know, that's one thing that's unique and this isn't a plug about plug for trio, but it is like the way it's set up is it's one number and it's kind of, it's, it's, so if a call, a player calls in, it routes to that host. And then, but if that host leaves, here's the benefit. It's you just click a button and those calls route to the, the new host. So the that's player, good. cause that's, I think that's the jarring part is the player they call and it's DDD, you know, like, oh, this number is disconnected. Yeah. Well, what do I do now? They're like a ship at sea. Like, well, what do yeah. I do? And now they're open all of a sudden to, to trying somewhere else. And they get a text from their, the host, the new property three days later. And like, you know, like maybe so they could drive to the casino and talk to somebody. But a lot of times they're like, the, you know, when there's a jarring event, that's when habits can break. And Absolutely. so, so that's where we sell it as a benefit. It's like, Hey, there's one number that's that really benefit. Thinking, like, you you can now send you know have the new host just send a text pick up the phone and call all the people like hey same number don't worry i got you and all, and the other thing is all the conversations are still there as opposed to if that host leaves right beautiful beautiful and yeah and i mean that's a whole another topic that because i've gone to casinos where you know there's there's I, I can train them on protocols when a host does leave or you do let go a host or you know and you hand that list to the new host or somebody who's never been a host or, you know, and there's letters that go out and there's text messages. It's horrible. They're not doing it right. They're not, mm -hmm. you know, there's no way to do, to, to run your business. Um, letting these, letting these new hosts write some letter, you know, uh, this, he's no longer here. I'm your new host. I mean, just, there's a lot of protocol, but we could talk about that on a, yeah, on a I think that would be a good one to, to, to follow up with because I I've seen it too, where it just goes sideways and it's like, what were you thinking? You know, yeah, bad nothing, well, the old host right. or whatever. It's like, stop yeah. now. Don't. Again, we're not popping the bubble in PD. We're not, we're not getting in there. We're not seeing. And, and the best question is, let's go back to the original thing. Coding incentive program what's the what's the main goal mm -hmm. that's what i would whisper do you see the post i did on linkedin with the consigliere's whispering to the don that's you know that's me whispering to ceos about pd right what's the goal here and and then we'll work towards that i love it well nick we are popping bubbles we're blowing minds i always love these conversations we gotta we gotta do it again For very sure. soon because i think we left a lot of meat on the bone with this conversation we we, I also don't have a UR comp shirt. I don't know why. I'm I'm sitting here wondering why I don't have any UR comp. Hey, hey. all right, send me your yeah, address. Maybe I know somebody there. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you're the man, Nick. Thank you Not so much. Talk to you later. Go get a haircut. <laughs>